This is an ABP Life podcast. Welcome to Cracking Conversations. I am Niharika Nanda and in this podcast we talk to people, share experiences and crack meaningful conversations. Wishing you all a very happy 75th Independence Day. Today let's talk about something different. हम सब ने अपने नाना जी नानी जी दादी माँ दादा जी से बहुत सारी स्टोरी सुनी है अबाउट द फ्रीडम स्ट्रगल हमने पढ़ा है फ्रीडम स्ट्रगल के बारे में बट देर आर लॉट ऑफ अनटोल्ड स्टोरीज एंड अ लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स दैट वी स्टिल डोंट नो सो टू हैव दिस इंडिपेंडेंस डे स्पेशल चैट टूडे वी हैव अ वेरी स्पेशल गेस्ट ऑन क्रैकिंग कॉन्वर्सेशन टूडे वी हैव कर्नल दानवीर सिंह चौहान हु इज द एसोसिएट एडिटर ऑफ इंडियन डिफेंस रिव्यू Welcome to Cracking Conversations Colonel Dalveer Singh I am so happy to have you here today on the occasion of Independence Day on our podcast Yeah it is absolutely a pleasure Neharika to be talking to you and it is certainly uh, the best occasion to talk to in fact uh, Independence Day and uh, happy Independence Day Thank you thank you so much sir and wishing a very happy Independence Day to you and all our listeners too Thank you So sir when we talk about the independence हमने बहुत सारी स्टोरीज सुनी है फ्रॉम आर ग्रैंड पेरेंट्स फ्रॉम पीपल अराउंड अस वाइल यू स्टडिंग वी हैव लिसन टू ऑफ स्टोरीज एंड लॉट ऑफ फैक्ट्स अबाउट पार्टिशन अबाउट फ्रीडम स्ट्रगल बट वी कैन नॉट डिनाई द फैक्ट दैट एट दैट टाइम अ मेजर चंक ऑफ द इंडियन पॉपुलेशन एंड इंडियन सिटीजन वर नॉट लिटरेट सो द रेकर्ड्स दैट वुड हैव बीन एट दैट मोमेंट वर प्रिटी मच फॉर्मुलेटेड बाई द ब्रिटिशर्स और अ स्मॉल चंक ऑफ द लिटरेट इंडियंस so do you think that there would have been a discrepancy in the stories and the facts that were at that time and the ones that we know today well uh, this is again a matter of research that could there be any kind of discrepancy as to what exactly happened during those days uh, right. to what we have understanding of hmm. the facts uh, today well uh, uh, this needs to be researched and can't be answered uh, just uh, uh like that but nevertheless what uh, point you mentioned that is quite important pertinent uh that is that uh, uh the population that time was pretty illiterate as compared right. and today people are more aware people are more literate so of course the uh, the narration of the same story will have a different connotation if a person is educated and who can understand the matter uh, much more in depth vis-a-vis a person who is illiterate so illiterate right. person uh, uh, in fact i would put it this way that if there is a much of literacy uh, illiteracy then uh, it is just uh, reporting the statement of fact but if you are literate probably you can have a little more insight into why what where and when so i think uh, the depth part may be lacking but at the same time we uh cannot say that uh, whatever they said or whatever it was uh narrated from the men and women of those times would be right. incorrect that would be rather to be incorrect to say that uh, right. in fact it would be uh more um, yeah, logical to say that probably the reporting part was absolutely correct uh, without right. any color in it right because there might not have been the kind of biases that maybe somebody else at this point might have but at that point it was more about reporting facts uh, yeah it was more about reporting that like, or, uh, or 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 another uh, dimension to this would be that if you are uh, not well uh, literate and uh, means of information communication is also not there like what we have today right uh, it can also be a uh, true that uh, those people have been affected by a propaganda lot more than what mm-hmm. uh, the present generation would be so that aspect is also there that's why i said that, that there are uh, multiple dimensions to this uh, question and it needs to be uh, you know scientifically uh, uh, you know researched and then uh, right. given an answer yeah right definitely and uh, so when it comes to our freedom struggle there might have been a lot of unknown heroes who gave their lives and struggled but we still don't know about them so what do you think about that because we know of course a lot of people who gave in uh, everything that they had for the kind of freedom that we enjoy today but what about the kind of names that we don't know and they still sacrificed everything that they had for us yeah this is a very nice question in fact uh, uh, there would be thousands and thousands of them 
Definitely. they would be heroes at village level at uh, district level at state level you know at at various levels there right. would be numerous numerous heroes because it was not a handful of few guys who right. you can credit with uh, you know giving you freedom there has to be a mass uh, following of those people and that mass following would actually transcend into uh, people coming out from villages and mohallas and gullies you know right. and and those people uh, were the heroes you know everybody gave some part of sacrifice somewhere or the other somebody right. got the limelight mm-hmm. and uh, majority did so unfortunately what has happened is uh, after independence that we have failed to give value or identify or give credit to the local heroes local heroes as in the village heroes the mohallas and the gullies and the nukkad heroes uh, right. because they all constituted a bigger mass hmm. that was uh, following our great leaders so uh, i think that is the place where we misstepped and uh, we missed out on number of heroes but still if we uh, go to the villages the folklore uh, would suggest that yes there are many more heroes that need recognition and i think in this age of media probably somewhere or the other that people are at the job that's very right because uh, when it comes to the word leader after all a leader is not a leader with a, when they don't have a following so of course there are a lot of freedom fighters who fought but they had they needed that following so that they can collectively work towards the freedom that you have to do of course uh, you know it is not one man's job it is the job right. of the mass uh, right. and and uh, uh, to compel a power like that of the british uh, hmm. was because of the mass movement so let's right. understand that that mass movement uh, was in form of the gandhian movement Mm-hmm. mass movement was in form of uh, lokmanya tilak uh, ideology types right. of movement mass right. movement was in form of netaji's uh, style of movement mm-hmm. so uh, there were numerous type of movement there was uh, a movement by the gadar party that there was a movement uh, led by people uh, who sacrificed their lives like uh, shahid bhagat singh so there were numerous type of movements with mass followings uh that resulted into compelling the uh british powers to leave india right. and while we are talking let's not forget that there was a very big movement by barsha khan of peshawar uh, ever pakhtunwa today's khyber pakhtunwa that time nwfp so right. uh, so there have been movements there have been massive movements uh, and uh, we have to acknowledge we have to acknowledge yeah definitely and so since you mentioned there are so many different kind of movements would you like to share with us any kind of a maybe untold story or something maybe a folklore or something of that sort that you might be aware of but uh, our listeners are probably not an untold story about the independence or the partition or the freedom struggle well uh, i used to speak to my grandparents and uh, uh, you know they used to say that uh, when freedom struggle was going on there was uh, a massive uh, sense of uh, uh, you know responsibility on everybody's shoulders everybody right. felt that uh, he was responsible mm-hmm. he he took uh, acknowledgement of the fact that uh, he is part of a very big movement and whoever it may be whoever uh, uh, so he may be they all all contributed in fact my grandfather used to say that uh, Uh, whenever these calls were being made by the leaders everybody used to follow those calls very very religiously and what i make out when i today uh, uh, you know recall my grandfather's uh, words uh, to what i see today is uh, that uh, the political leadership of uh, this country is trying to awaken people at the same level Okay. same level of nationalism is uh, uh, coming by by the leadership uh, of this country be it uh, uh, the central leadership or any party state leadership so they there is a sense of nationalism that is coming which i correlate to the type of nationalism that was there uh, during the freedom struggle so this is what i draw a, a, a comparison with uh, mm-hmm. and uh, as far as uh, things are concerned i remember my grandfather saying that uh, when gandhi had come 
to that area uh, she uh, walked uh, along with her father for about uh, 20 25 kilometers on his shoulders just uh-huh. to see gandhi mm. so she was a young uh, girl of around uh, 12 13 years so that is how it was so that was the craze that was the passion uh, during those days so that was the level of uh, motivation amongst the people uh, we are talk- talking of those eras when uh, there were no roads no electricity and uh, no means of transportation by word of mouth yeah right. the, the the message used to spread by word of mouth in the interior so this is this was the level of praise and connection and also the yeah. dedication that they want that they had towards their own leaders that they would walk as long as 25 kilometers just to get a glimpse of the leader who they are following absolutely so that was the uh, power of gandhi i realized uh, when i heard my grandmother read this part of the story so okay. uh well uh, if i if i if i may say so that even my grandfather was uh, you know contributing to that uh, freedom uh, struggle by Definitely. traveling on uh, father's shoulder and uh, being a cause of motivation to other guys who were walking right. uh, adjacent and uh, you know close by so uh, and motivation in the village as well that uh, he had taken his daughter on his shoulder just to hmm. have a glimpse of that great leader and thereafter uh what they saw and how it happened and all uh, that became part of the daily conversation i'm sure it would have lasted for years together uh, right through the independence so that is how it was uh, i guess in those days definitely and so why just right through the independence till date you are still mentioning that anecdote so we see that how that story how the impact has traveled across times absolutely so that is the that is the beauty and power of uh, true leaders that is that is what is leadership that is what is uh, connect and this was the movement this right. was the movement yeah so as you mentioned that you drew a parallel of the kind of nationalism that was probably there at that time during the independence and the kind that we are seeing today so but there were also certain evils of the society again at that point there were the britishers which need to be driven out of the country so what do you think that are uh, the kind of evils that we are fighting today in india as a society that we need independence from uh, see uh, uh, again by talking to uh, the oldies you know i gather that there was a very serious religious bias uh, during those days right um, and uh, Uh, the level of uh, uh, communalism was to a very very big extent we don't right. see that part as in it mm. uh, though people do talk about it on those lines but uh, it is nowhere near that right. uh, that time the passion was uh, the, the religious fervor on both mm. sides were too high uh, kind courtesy mr jinnah and his uh, party that right. they uh, brought in the communal angle and mm. divided the society what harm they did to the society then you can still feel uh, the impact today After fact, whatever well. communalism that, that you see today is actually part of the story that started in 1940 now yeah. you go to any punjabi family in delhi everybody has a history of partition and they are so they are so Uh, I mean, you start crying when you hear to those stories. So those stories have not been published uh, in right. that manner. But each family carries that story. Each family mm-hmm. has yeah, a story, story of uh, of their own. Right. So that has not gone anywhere. That has not gone anywhere. No matter how uh, politically correct we try to be. So what we are seeing is a manifestation of that that hidden pain. that we see on social media right. on various other interactions that we see so mm. as as mature people we should just allow it allow people to express themselves rather than getting too judgmental and right. uh, too right. reactive i mean that's my uh, way of looking at it definitely definitely because we don't understand the kind of things that that particular person is coming from when it comes to the kind of expression that they are making of their thoughts absolutely absolutely so uh, uh, till the time we do not behave uh, like lunatics on the roads and all till the time it is just a part of a discourse till right. the time it is just 
uh, there to uh, settle the matter at the end of it and uh, we should not make too much out of it uh, because uh, the best part of the whole uh, uh, this saga would what I would uh, rather uh, call it is that on the streets at our workplaces and when we uh, move around we do not see those kinds of uh, uh, tensions that we see generally on the social media uh, so one can well, well I, I personally feel that it is uh, that somebody is just venting it out and let the guy vent it out definitely and so coming from the same thing that you just said you said that there are a lot of families that still have the histories and the this and they still have the stories and the testimonies of the time that has gone by which somehow went undocumented because of course you can't get to understand the story of each and every family or each and every person out there who had to go through that kind of a scenario unfortunately so what do you think is a way that we can somehow come out with those stories we can somehow let people know about those testimonies so uh, let's not restrict ourselves to partition i'll go to my village again uh, when i'm talking right. and Definitely. my village uh, my village there are uh, two temples hmm. who the, the two temples were destroyed by orange okay the very old temples and uh, the remnants of those temples are still there Hmm. So what the villagers have done is that they have heaped all the murtis, all broken murtis, and they have made a small heap with an enclosure hmm. around, and constructed a new temple by the side. So right. whenever there is the holy, because my side holy is uh, celebrated with great fervor, everybody, every every single being of the village visits those temples and takes a prakrima of those broken idols. as well when they take mm. uh, prakrima of uh, the temple the new property. temple right and every time they do so it reminds of the historical past right but at right. the same time there are four families in my village they are muslims mm. not a single incident of whatsoever uh, uh, in anybody's history and mind uh, uh, that they have ever been harmed or even abused injustice is always remembered but not talked about right and those not people who follow a different it is not state, impacting the present situation it's not impacting but it is being remembered right. but what i'm trying to say is that the society has come to term society has constructed a new temple next by next to the uh, the broken one right and the broken Uh, uh, idols are also uh, remembered when, whenever there is a religious uh, occasion. So, right. and but it is not impacting your social order in the village. There are Muslim families in my village, and they are not impacted by that. And they're all and living in a harmonious, harmonious manner. In a harmonious, absolutely harmonious manner, because uh, the the village life is very peculiar. Uh, if I am chacha to someone, then I am chacha to. Uh, them as well right. so they will all refer to me as chacha or mm. baba or tau or brother or son it's more like a so huge family how, and couple of family it's a huge family so it exists uh, so that is that is the story definitely so i think if it we can come to this conclusion that no matter what is happening around us if we stay true to the kind of values that we hold for ourselves and for others irrespective of their beliefs irrespective of their religion then we can live in a more harmonious society yeah absolutely i personally feel that uh, the historical injuries hmm. are still alive uh, they are very much alive and what needs is a decent a recognition you know hmm. so what is required i mean it's, it's my feeling uh, that you require to have a very straight forward very truthful narration of the history right Th- that should include right. all dimensions of the mm-hmm. views and mm-hmm. as people are getting literate as people are uh, reading more and more accounts you know uh, of various authors uh, mm-hmm. uh, aided authors who are internationally acclaimed authors who are independent authors one realizes that yes uh, justice should have been uh, given at least through the history books right and there is more to what we actually know and it lies in the stories of villages like yours it lies in the stories of the people who there were our grandparents our great grandparents who actually 
were there at that moment in time and those testimonies Absolutely. need to transport and need to come into our today's society as well Absolutely you see uh, it is uh, like uh, the story like story of the ramayana the mahabharat the way it is narrated nobody reads it i have right. never read mahabharat or ramayana but i know the story right because it has been narrated by the grand hmm. my kids also know the stories because i have narrated the, those stories to them right. but uh, none of us uh, have ever read them actually read so it. similarly yeah so uh, uh, similarly uh, there have numerous historical incidents that have passed in form of uh, stories hmm. in those small small villages and they are still live some are still sung in the uh, local uh, folk songs so it is there it's a big huge task to append all those things but i think regional studies should be carried out yes and region wise region wise a uh, a uh, compendium sort of should be created with the uh, folklore with the uh, archaeological facts and uh, various other scientific means they should be uh, concluded and brought Definitely. to the fore or at least uh, kept as record for uh, right. subsequent uh, you know studies definitely thank you so much uh, colonel danveer singh thank you for joining us today and thank you for talking about this thing because these are the kind of things that we forget in the light of the celebration that we have for our freedom that there were stories that have still that are still untold and that is how it is through conversations like this with people like you that we understand that there is much more than than that what we get to see or we get to hear absolutely niharika it was definitely a great pleasure and thanks for asking such pertinent and pointed question because uh, you need a platform to talk and express right. and you gave that thank you very much definitely thank you so much for joining me sir thank you so much jai hind Jai Hind. So, guys, we just heard Colonel Danveer Singh talk about the kind of things that we are dealing with in the present, जो कि पहले भी हुआ करती थी, and how the untold stories of the past, of the times, the independence and the freedom struggle, can be brought out very carefully if we really want to by keeping in touch with our roots, by keeping in touch with the people who were there at that point in villages, in our families, and by so many different ways. So wishing you all a very happy 75th Independence Day. I hope that India progresses even more every year. For more such meaningful conversations, tune into Cracking Conversations every week only on ABP Life Podcasts with me, Niharika Nanda. The sound designing for this episode was delivered by Lal. See you guys soon. This is an ABP Life Podcast. 